to our service of morning prayer. We have a very exciting morning service for you with a lot of things. We've got a mission to focus spot on the work of CPAS and later we'll also be hearing from some of our church families about how lockdown has affected them. Philip Sheldrake will be speaking about the workers and the harvest and we've got lots of lovely music to participate in and enjoy. So let us pause as we come before God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. And we'll now sing together that wonderful song of praise, Great is the darkness that covers the earth. to the time in the service when we say sorry to God for all the things that have come between us and him in the past week. The thoughts we've had, the words we've said, the actions we've done or not done. We bring them all to our loving Father. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by his Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and ma bitterness, slander and malice, and confess our sins to our merciful Redeemer. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, 
forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And because we have a loving Father who always forgives us when we ask, we have the assurance of forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And we hear the church's prayer for today, the collect. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in the ways of wisdom that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. And we now hear something of the work of CPAS. Hello St Mary's and thank you ever so much for this opportunity just to say um, a couple of words about CPAS on this, your Mission Focus um, Sunday. Um, before I do that and in particular give you one or two things that perhaps you could pray for for the work and ministry of CPS at this time, can I firstly say a massive thank you um, to you for your continued prayer and financial support. You, you may or may not realise it but every year for a number of years you have given very generously um, to CPAS and we are enormously grateful for that. I know we've been around since 1836. I know we're a recognised Church of England mission agency, but we are a charity and we have to raise the money uh, that we need to do the things that God is calling us to. So we are so grateful for your support. Thank you. Well, what can you pray for us at this particular time? Clearly, the obvious thing to say is we are in a very unusual situation and we've tried over the last few months to um, respond to the COVID crisis positively and to step in, as it were, to the space created by it to help local churches at this time in their mission, evangelism and witness. So three things in particular that you could pray for us. Firstly, it won't surprise you to know that we've had to cancel our residential ventures and falcons um, this summer. However, in their place, we are developing what we're calling virtual ventures. And in fact, just last week, we had two pilot projects over the half term period. Um, these are, if you like, um, uh, ventures without everyone getting together. So a series of Zooms and social media meetings during the day in which the youngsters can still um, convene virtually uh, and into which we can offer Bible teaching and encouragement. We're hoping that a whole load of ventures will happen virtually this summer. So please pray for the overall leaders putting that together. Please pray for the central planning that we're having to do to enable these very different ventures to happen. And please pray that there really will be a good sign up um, from members. So that's virtual ventures. Secondly, can we ask you to pray for the webinars that we are very quickly developing and offering at this time? We actually put out um, an advertisement on our website just a couple of weeks ago of, uh, advertising a webinar called Leadership in Lockdown. And within literally 48 hours, 400 people had signed up to come on that particular webinar. We're now developing another webinar for this next month and another one for July. What we're finding is that local church leaders, both ordained and lay, are wanting help in how to oversee facilitate, release the mission of the church at this particular time. So do pray for James Lawrence in particular, as he over, um, uh, oversees the development of those webinars. And then thirdly, will you pray for us in our relationship with patronage churches such as yourself? Uh, I'll come back to yourselves in just a moment. Uh, but there are 692 churches uh, that we have a patronage relationship with. And one of the things that we're trying to do at the moment is phone the incumbent of every single one of them to see if we can offer encouragement and prayerful support at this time. A number of them are saying things to us like nobody has rung us to offer that level of support. I'm struggling with this or with that. Can you offer me advice or tell me what other people um, are doing? So please pray for those ministering phone calls. Which brings me finally um, just to yourselves uh, and um, the opportunity um, to say to you that CPS is praying for you in this time 
a vacancy and um, since before Phil left and since then I've been in touch with Richard and Andy and will continue to be so and I do hope and pray that we might be able very soon um, to move the vacancy process along and to get to a place where we are able to discern who God is calling to be your new rector. So please um, be assured at the same time as I'm saying thank you to you for your support to us that CPS remembers St Mary's, that CPS has great bowdo in its mind and that we will be praying for you at this particular time, that God might use the opportunities as well as the challenges of the moment to enable you to show his love, to speak of his love, to model what it is like to be a people of hope. So thanks so much for listening and um, take care and thank you for the opportunity to be with you, albeit virtually, this morning. God bless. This morning's Bible reading is Matthew 9 verse 35 to Matthew 10 verse 8. I'm reading from the Good News Bible. Jesus went round visiting all the towns and villages. He taught in the synagogues, preached the good news about the kingdom and healed people with every kind of disease and sickness. As he saw the crowds, his heart was filled with pity for them because they were worried and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So he said to his disciples, The harvest is large, but there are few workers to gather it in. Pray to the owner of the harvest that he will send out workers to gather in his harvest. Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. James and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the patriot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These twelve men were sent out by Jesus with the following instructions. Do not go to any Gentile territory or any Samaritan towns. Instead, you are to go to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. Go and preach the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, bring the dead back to life. Heal those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases and drive out demons. You have received without paying, so give without being paid. Something's going on in our society right now during this pandemic. It seems that more than ever people are hungry to connect with God. The comedian Russell Brand put a YouTube clip up the other day asking the question, why are so many people all of a sudden Googling this word prayer? He argues that during lockdown, people are hungry more than ever for some kind of sacred experience. A friend of mine is a writer. She was chatting with her publisher the other day. And during the course of their conversation, she asked how his business was doing. And he said, well, actually, we're doing really well. We're selling more books than we do before Christmas. In fact, things are flying off the shelves. She said, well, that's brilliant. What kind of stuff is flying off the shelves? He said, well, anything we've got on prayer and everything we've got on mental health. Let me tell you a story. Back in 2002, I was working for a church in central London and my vicar was on holiday. So it was my job to open up the church for morning prayer. In I go, nice and early, through the side chapel, glance to my left to see if everything's okay in the nave and I was greeted by a scene of utter carnage. The great west doors were smashed off their hinges, I could see down the street, the internal doors off their hinges too, glass everywhere, chairs strewn all about the place and down the middle of the nave carpet were two dirty great tire tracks and there by the steps to the sanctuary was a red Volvo estate and up on the communion table was an opened up laptop bizarre i could not believe what i was seeing now during the course of the days my colleague dealt with the insurance company and i chatted to the police we found out 
that a guy with mental health problems was trying to get into the church after we'd gone home in the evening. And finding it locked, he decided to smash the church open with his Volvo estate, causing £80,000 worth of damage. It was a bizarre scene that I will never, ever forget. Our gospel passage today is really apt because the harvest out there is plentiful, but the labourers are few. COVID-19 has rocked many people to the core and God is looking for us to be change agents to help people connect with him. And so my question for all of us today is, do we want to be a change agent? Because if we do, we've got to have a message for people to help them connect with him. Otherwise, if we don't want to be change agents, well, we will be changed by the culture around us. No one lives in a vacuum. Either we're doing the changing or the change has been done to us. This passage, if we're willing to sit under it, is going to search us out. It's a familiar passage. We've sung songs about it for years in the church. We know it back to front, but it demands a real genuine response from each of us. So let's look at it a little bit deeper today. Jesus is calling people and healing people. Prior to this passage, he's healed a paralytic, lowered through the roof by his mates. He's brought a dead girl back to life. A woman who's been bleeding for 12 years is remarkably and dramatically healed. Two blind men receive their sight and a demon possessed man is set free from the spiritual chains that have held him back for so many years. At the same time, Matthew quits his desk job as a tax collector, decides to follow Jesus. John's disciples come along and curiously check Jesus out. And we know from John's gospel, they end up following him as well. Jesus is healing and calling and calling and healing. And it's the start of a revolution, the revolution of the kingdom of God. And despite all of his critics, people want to follow this dynamic young leader from Nazareth. Wow, they say, never, never has anything been seen like this in Israel before. And in verse 35, Matthew summarises those previous two chapters. Jesus has been preaching and teaching and healing. And he gathers the twelve around him. They're, they're going to be sent out with specific instructions on their own kind of mission. And Jesus is passing on to them that which is his own mission and his own ministry. He's saying, what I've been doing, you do. You do the preaching. You do the teaching. You do the healing. And this is about a group of guys called to be change agents within their culture and during their time. They're to affect their communities and their nation and eventually the world in two key ways. The first way is with compassion. The reason for Jesus's ceaseless activity mentioned in verse 35 is his deep compassion for people. Now, the Greek verb for compassion is, well, utterly unpronounceable. I'll stick it on the screen, but it translates as gut reaction. In Jewish thought, the seat of genuine love, genuine pity, resided in the viscera, in the guts. And it's, it's a strange Greek word that appears only three other times in the New Testament when it doesn't refer to Jesus. We find it in the parable of the merciful, uh, unmerciful servant. We find it in the parable of the good Samaritan. We find it in the parable of the prodigal son. In all other cases, that deep, that beautiful, that tender compassion belongs to Jesus himself. And guess what? He wants each of us to ask for it and to display it within our culture. Jesus describes the crowds before him as sheep without a shepherd. Now in the Old Testament, that phrase sheep without a shepherd, it, it kind of meant a lack of political leadership in the nation. But in the New Testament, it's more than that. It's, it's Jesus describing a lack of spiritual leadership there in Israel because he sees the people as being harassed and helpless. Jesus' compassion means that he's bothered, he's deeply moved by people looking for a sacred experience, looking for meaning, purpose and certainty in life. This must be why he turns to his disciples and says to them, look, guys, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. He can't bear it any longer. These people before him, they desperately need to hear the truth that God loves them. In fact, they're completely ready to hear it. 
You know, if there were bookshops in Israel at the time offering prayer resources, they'd been flying off the shelves. We see in the case of Volvo Man, we see in Russell Brand's comments, we see in the publisher's comments about the books flying off the shelves that this is signs of today's harvest. People are desperately trying to connect with God, but the laborers are few. So do you want to be God's change agent within our culture and during these times? Because if so, you've got to pray for the compassion of Jesus to move you within your gut. Secondly, the other way that change agents affect their culture and their community is with authority. Jesus knew that his time on earth was short. He was going to the cross, but he knew he had to raise up church, uh, change agents. He needed to, to show them how to walk in his authority. He knew he was going to ascend to be with the Father, but he would send the Spirit at Pentecost. And these guys would need to understand what spiritual authority meant. This is their commissioning in chapter 10. These guys will change the world. But where do they get sent first? Have you noticed? They get sent to the lost sheep of Israel. That's where Jesus wants his change agents to go. They go to their own culture and their own people. It's the same with us. Hey, we've got to go to the people of Great Battle. And here's the charge that Jesus gives them. He says, proclaim the good news. Oh, and do this too. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. What I've been doing, you do. Is it impossible? Well, yeah, it is in their own strength. But in his authority, it's not impossible because he gives his change agents all the authority they need over spiritual forces of darkness and all the authority they need to cure every disease and sickness. And it's an authority that we each have too in him because like the disciples, our mission is an extension of his as a church during this strange moment in history with everything going on around us, we need to start believing in this truth again because we can do anything in Jesus' name. I think we may have forgotten that. When you walk in Jesus' authority, you have everything you need. The disciples were told not to cash out, not to sell their ministry, not to be bought by others, but to simply be change agents. Perhaps our generation of Western church might reflect on what are the real essentials going forward beyond lockdown in ministry? What's it all about really? What's been getting in the way of our being compassionate? What's made us timid and unable as a church to walk humbly and non-judgmentally and yet confidently and under his authority? So do you want to be God's change agent within our culture and during these strange times? Because if so, you've got to pray for the authority of Jesus and then you've got to walk in it. But how do we become compassionate like Jesus and non-judgmental? How do we get over our timidity as a church in the face of culture and begin to walk in his authority? Well, if we jump back to 38 of chapter 9, we'll find out how. It's through prayer because Jesus gets them praying before they do anything else, doesn't he? Ask the Lord of the harvest. Don't ask him later. Ask him before you go. You see, more prayer equals more compassion in us, more gut reaction. More gut reaction equals more desperation to see people connect with God. It stirs us up. It compels us. We become so desperate to see change in our community, in our culture, until we then become the answer to the problem. We become the change that we want to see around us in Great Barrow, in our schools, in our families, in our workplaces. But do you long to see it? Do you long to see people discovering that they're known by God, that they're loved by him, that they're fearfully and wonderfully made? Do you want to see people do marriage right? Do parenting right? Do relationships right? Do finances right? People standing up for truth, for justice, and, and all that God calls good. Do you want to see it? Because if you do, you'll be praying for it. You'll be asking for that compassion and believing in the authority Jesus has given you as a believer. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You know, I've heard anecdotal evidence during lockdown, which suggests that 50% of church goers 
have not been attending church online. 50%. Yet one in four non-churchgoers are connecting with the church online. What's that saying? The laborers are few. But when we come out of this COVID madness, there may be people asking us serious questions about life, about death, about meaning, about certainty. And you and I are going to have to have the answer for the hope that we have. So what is your answer going to be? Well, here it is. Here's your message. The message every change agent needs. Seven words. The kingdom of heaven has come near. That's the message. It's a message of good news. It's a message of hope. And it requires that we embrace a different worldview to that of our Western culture. A culture which boasts that it doesn't have time to listen to the outdated teaching of the church. It says it doesn't understand an obscure message of salvation and this antiquated word sin and, and hope for the life to come. It scoffs at our praying for the sick to be cured. It's a sceptical, rational, scientific culture and yet during a pandemic has been devouring resources on prayer because suddenly the self-sufficient foundations of Western life with its illusion of safety have been shaken to their core. Now the great thing about Volvo Gate was that my vicar was able to visit the guy in hospital and when he was released Together, the pair of them made a communion table out of one of the Great West doors that have been ripped off their hinges. It's a beautiful story of someone beginning their journey of connection with God. Perhaps now, during this pandemic, God is reminding his church that it faces an opportunity to once again take seriously the call to be change agents, no longer timidly and perhaps a little too comfortably residing within its buildings, but instead responding to the mandate that what I've been doing you do. People are ready to hear. People are turning to prayer right now. People are watching this service even now. And something's happening to our Western culture. Do you perceive it? And do you want to be a part of changing it? That's the question. If so, pray with me that the churches in Great Barrow will respond with the gut moving compassion of Jesus, the authority of our risen and ascended Lord and the boldness to proclaim in word and deed that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Amen.
Now is the time to affirm together what we believe in. And we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And we now hear from the Robertson family and from Catherine Beals about how life in lockdown and being in school is affecting them. Hello everybody, I'm Lisa and I've got Charlotte and Emily with me. We're just talking to you a little bit about how lockdown is now affecting us with the recent changes. I've recently gone back to work. I work at a local primary school in a reception class and um, I found I was a bit nervous about going back with the children coming back to school and how they were going to cope with it. Actually, it's gone really well. They've coped really well. They're settled really nicely. Um, having to juggle working with the children in school as well as working with the children who are still at home. But at the moment, it's all very positive. So I just like prayer requests really is that it, it stays that way and families continue to um, understand what we're doing and um, support us as we're working with them and that things continue to transition smoothly towards the end of the year. Charlotte? Um, I've been doing my college work, trying to keep on top of it and trying to wake up for my Zoom calls at 10am. But yeah, I've got back to work and I've been doing a bit of dancing. Not much, but enough. Em? I've been keeping on top of all my school work. So I've been set work every week and I've been doing it and sending it in at the end of the week. And I have been going down to the horses, so I've been getting fresh air and exercise by going down to the horses. Uh, that's really what we've been up to. Um, what we've really missed is being able to see everybody face to face from church and we look forward to the time when Egypt maybe we'll be able to be back together again soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Hello St Mary's. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Catherine and I'm a Year 5 teacher at St John's Primary School in Danbury. Sue's asked me to say a little bit about life in school at the moment. And as a lot of you will know, during lockdown, most children have been working at home. And during that time, I taught my class remotely and was on a rotor to come into school once a week to work with the children of key workers and those children who are more vulnerable. Um, last week, schools opened more widely to reception year one and year six. So here at St John's, we have about two thirds of year sixes coming to school at the moment. And I'm currently teaching a bubble of 12 year six children which has been lovely. It's been a delight to be back with the children. Um, this lot were my class last year, so it's been lovely to have them again. Um, we normally have classes of 35, so it's also been rather nice to be working with a small group as, as there's so much more chance to spend time with each child. Um, the children have come in are relaxed and really appreciating seeing their friends and they're enjoying doing their schoolwork because it's just nice to be here. Apart from my desk, which is always messy, my classroom looks very different from normal as the children are sat at individual tables. We've got a lot of new routines, hand washing, one-way systems around school, which is doing wonders for my Fitbit steps as we go round and round <laughs> and round, um, stagger playtimes, etc. But the children are getting, haven't really battered an eyelid and have just got on with new routines. Nonetheless, unless they're at the desks, they are like little magnets and social distancing is really tricky. Um, they just gravitate towards each other. Things we'd appreciate prayer for. Um, pray for the children still working at home. Some are really thriving, which is lovely to see. I've loved having so much one-to-one -one contact during lockdown with the children, which isn't normally possible in a, a large class. However, children's circumstances vary so much, and for some, it's a huge struggle. 
pray for parents as they juggle work and other responsibilities with supporting their children's learning and pray that as teachers we get the right balance between encouraging children to do their work but not adding extra pressure to families already coping in difficult circumstances. Please pray for safety in school. We've got really good procedures in place with which the children are coping really well with but there's still a high level of anxiety amongst staff about the risk of infection. Numbers of children in school are gradually creeping up as parents feel more confident to send in their children, which is good, but this does make social distancing more tricky. Government guidelines are that we're not to use masks or other PPE and it's acknowledged that social distancing with children is often not possible, which naturally leaves people feeling vulnerable as it's different from the guidance for other workplaces or outside the home. And um, pray for our workload as well, please. Although I'm teaching Year 6 all day in class, I also need to plan for and teach my own class of Year 5s remotely. And we all want to do our best for the children at home, but it's hard to find time to give as much contact and feedback as we were giving. Um, so that's a bit of a struggle. And of course it's report writing time of year. Um, thank you for listening and have a good week. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We name in your presence this morning people and situations that need our prayers. We pray today for peace in our world and an end to violence. May there be peace in our homes and hearts so that we may live and work together in the spirit of peace and harmony. Lord, you call us to follow in your footsteps. Help us to know what this looks like in each situation where we find ourselves. Help us to know when following you means washing the feet of others, when it means turning over tables, when it means breaking down the barriers that divide people from each other in the homes where we live, the places we work, the communities where we worship. We grieve the fact that our world is divided and we ask that you work powerfully in our small lives and our big world to break down the walls that divide, break down the walls between Jew and Gentile, between male and female, between weak and strong, between young and old, between rich and poor, between board member and worker, between Christian and Muslim, between black and white. Break down the walls within our lives, our own lives, which hold us back from reaching out to others which prevent us from seeing the best in other people, in other cultures, which stop our, your love getting in and your blessing getting out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, place your guiding hand on all those people who are currently looking for alternative ways to deliver your message in these difficult times. We pray especially for all leaders and organisers of the CPAS's virtual ventures and we look forward to hear about their great success in the future. We pray that the CPAS and especially James Lawrence are able to keep up with the obvious demand for the webinar sessions that are being provided to support church's ministry in these challenging times. Lord, we hope and pray that the contact from the CPAS with all the patronage churches will show them your love and support in a very practical way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion at this time of crisis, we bring before you the peoples of our country and the world. We ask for your blessing and strength for those working tirelessly to protect and save life. We pray especially for vulnerable children and young people who are at greater risk during this time. Those who are not safe at home. Those who may be plunged into even greater poverty. Those whose fragile mental health may worsen. Those who feel abandoned and alone. Draw near to all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We also pray for staff and volunteers of all organisations that provide help and support for young people as they find new ways to support them in these challenging circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God our Father, we remember before you any who are suffering from any form of illness at this time. We pray especially for loved ones and for uh, and those no, who are known to us who are ill or in any kind of need. Remember them now in the quietness of our hearts. We know that you love them and know their every need far better than we do. We ask that you will do for them as you see best and bless them with your love and peace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who have died in the faith of Christ. We thank you for allowing us to share our lives with them. We pray for those who mourn. Open their minds that they may find a new direction in life and grant them comfort through your presence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now it's time for our notices. There are three notices this morning. Firstly, there is an encounter service tonight. Everyone is welcome to join, sing, praise God together and stay for the Zoom chat afterwards. Unfortunately, you'll have to bring your own coffee and cake. Secondly, prayer meeting tomorrow night. Please, please, if you can attend, it's vital for the life of the church that we pray together and that we wait on God as we plan for the future. And thirdly, a personal notice. If you are not in a home group and you would love to be in a home group, I have a home group meeting via Zoom at 10.30 on a Thursday morning. Everyone who is not in a home group or would like to be in a home group or would like to look at the Psalms is welcome to join. So if you feel this is something you would like to be involved in, contact me. My details are in the church directory um, and I would love to see as many as you have of you as possible. Thank you. And now we'll sing our closing song, Come Set Your Rule and Reign. And this is a really good link to what we're praying for and what we're hoping for as a worshipping community together. Unleash your kingdom's power. 
service draws to a close it's time for a blessing the love of the Lord Jesus draws us to himself the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen. <laughs>